This is White Plains Week, the weekly roundup of White Plains, Westchester, and world news with John Bailey, editor and publisher of the daily internet newspaper, White Plains Citizen Net Reporter, WPCNR.com. Jim Benneroff, editor and publisher of SuburbanStreet.com and WhitePlains.com. And me, Peter Katz, formerly with NBC, ABC News, and stations from Boston to Los Angeles. White Plains Week, what's happening? Who are the newsmakers? What's in store for the future? The views and opinions expressed on this program are solely those of the participants. White Plains Week is presented on Optimum Cable Channel 76, Verizon Fios Channel 45, and on the internet at whiteplainsweek.com, youtube.com, and wpcommunitymedia.org. Now, White Plains Week. Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. White Plains, Westchester, and the, wor and the world, and all of you cabinet selectees out there. It's two months until the fun starts. Now, here is Jim Benoit, my partner over the last 57, 16 years now. You're forgetting and about me. my partner, he always champing at the bit, ladies and gentlemen. Can't wait for my unique introductions. Peter Katz, the anchor for all seasons. And Jim, you have the headlines on the day after Thanksgiving. And here are the headlines for this week. Transit District to release its plan for the train station. AT&T building on Hamilton Avenue sold. Gedney Association picks apart the new revised site plan submitted for French American School of New York. White Plains housing sales for last three quarters reach highest level since 2008. Peter Katz will have another edition of our new feature, Trump in Transition. Housing plans for former Good Council property tweaked. Westmoreland Avenue Brewery and 50-unit rent, uh, rentals unveil design. 55 Bank Street, now known as the Continuum, continues to add a floor a week. Ruth Gruber, journalist who reported on Hitler and denial of sanctuary for refugees by U.S. Britain during and after World War II, dies at 105. We examine journalism in a majority of democracy as it works around the world. Thank you, Jim. And we go now to the uh, White Plains Week. Roll of the Newsroom March of Time, uh, for, for November 25th, 2016. That, of course, is the resumption of the Turkey Day football game that took place Thursday morning and, and this, Thanksgiving this is a Day. a classic between yes. White Plains High School and Stepanak, right? And this was a classic. It was won by Stepanak 49-32 to 32 in, a, in an amazing score. I think a record score for that game. There's the kickoff at the top, and then down below, you see uh, the White Plains' uh, Tiger Wilson scoring on a 48-yard run, running right at the camera. And uh, well, it, it was a like car bringer of things like to a, come. A, a kickoff time, John. The, yeah. the stands were not full. They weren't. How come? They were not. Uh, well, it's a late arriving crowd. They were still filing in, as they said, used to say at Ebbets Field. And what, what's, what do they charge for that game now? It's still five, five bucks? bucks yeah. Five, five like bucks, yeah. What happens to the money? Well, I think it goes to the various uh, football programs of the two schools. We're the boosters, and, you know, I mean... Did you have a good Thanksgiving day? Yes, as a matter Your of fact. Gym? Yeah. Yes. That's like yeah. the, that's it was Thanksgiving at my niece's house over in New Jersey, and uh, the table was set. The the bird was coming out of the oven with much coaching by the various uh, parents in planes, and um, that was service. And then there was the favorite time of day, the turkey pick, when the turkey has been served, it's been consumed, and then the meat is shaved off. Well, basically popping a little extra pieces of turkey. And of course, all around White Plains and Westchester, mm -hmm. uh, throughout the New York metro region, throughout the country mm -hmm. for that matter, 
Right. Uh, it, it was a day when people reached out to those who are less fortunate. Um, various shelters, various churches had right. uh, Thanksgiving dinners available for those who needed to have a place to have a Thanksgiving yes, dinner. Yes, the mood of America changes for one day. Yeah. Mm, yes. Which is always nice. It's the same with uh, Christmas and the uh, other holidays. And of course and the Thanksgiving Friday. parade in New York City went off without a hitch. Yes. Lots of extra security this year. Um, the police mm -hmm. used dump trucks filled with sand to block off every intersection along the route mm -hmm. because there had been a, a, an absolute threat raised mm -hmm. by terrorists in the Middle East that mm -hmm. the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade in New York was a prime target. Right. Fortunately, nothing happened. Well, it's... Uh, it's Something that we're just going to see a lot more of. We can be thankful for mm -hmm. the day that uh, was as joyful as it was. It was so not many. quiet on the roads. The uh, new I drove over to Jersey and the traffic stopped dead at the exit three area, westbound, mm -hmm. and it took about 25 minutes to get across that bridge with the new curves that they've put in to the bridge. So my thinking is even when the new bridge opens, the so new what, tap and Z. You, know, you are going to have a problem. But nobody listens to us. We just know traffic. <laughs> now, how about you? You had a you had a routine trip out to Long Island. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. The only time we had a problem was when we came to the Throgs Neck Bridge. We waited 25 minutes to get across. But other than that, the traffic, even on 495, which is the Long Island Expressway, mm -hmm. yeah. it was not bad. It was mm -hmm. moderately heavy. Wow. I, I wonder if New Jersey Governor Chris Christie gets a job in the Trump administration, whether there will be an end to delays on the bridges around the New York area. Mm. No, they will be increased for certain segments. Was that a little too subtle? Yes. <laughs> right. Now, let's go to the um, what everybody's talking about, and that is Trump in transition. Peter, give us this week's wrap-up. Well, this week, uh, John, in a video on YouTube, posted on YouTube and bypassing the media, President-elect Trump said the United States will withdraw from the Trans-Pacific trade deal on his first day in office. Now, TP, TPP, Trans-Pacific Partnership, which covers 40% of the global economy, was signed by 12 countries. Now, Trump's statement according to some observers, paves the way for China to assume the role the U.S. has been playing in trade and diplomacy in Asia. Uh, Trump also posted a Thanksgiving message on YouTube, again bypassing real journalists and avoiding having to answer real questions. Trump met with executives and reporters from the New York Times. Now, he had called the paper a jewel during that meeting, after having denounced it on Twitter just a couple of hours earlier, when asked about apparent conflicts of interest posed by him continuing to run his private businesses from the White House, a recording of the meeting with the Times executives and reporters reveals that Trump said it's his belief that presidents cannot have conflicts of interest. He met with executives and journalists from the major news networks. It was an off-the-record meeting, but there were leaks. No kidding. Yeah. Uh, and one <laughs> the of the journalists leaking something. One of the right. leaks yes. said that he spent the first 20 minutes of the meeting attacking those present in mm. the most vulgar language you can imagine. Trump has apparently refused daily classified intelligence briefings. This is something that presidents in fact, president-elects get every day. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to get them every day. Trump has said he doesn't want them. Uh, now, some think really? that, he, that he may not have the intelligence to understand what he's being told in these intelligence briefings, well, or the patience to sit still and learn about the world and its problems. That now, is disturbing. quite a contrast is that Vice President-elect Mike Pence has received his daily intelligence briefings. So he, so Pence is assuming the role of San, Pancho Sanza? Sancho Panza? Sancho Panza. Sancho Panza. The, uh, the idea... Sancho Panza! 
that, that's a the the I, the idea is that yes. is that every day the yes. president of the United States needs to be briefed on what's going on around the world. Yes. Uh, not only uh, from uh, the standpoint of diplomacy, but from the standpoint of what our intelligence services have gathered and have learned, and what we can see going on in the news media. So mm, what for Trump yeah. to say I'm not interested in this stuff is is just appalling. For some people, no, I think it really is. Well, um, will we be getting daily briefings from his children on Trump Enterprises? That's a good question. Yes. Now, as of our recording this program today, the day after Thanksgiving, Trump has not held a news conference since the election, and he has refused to answer questions shouted at him by reporters when they're allowed to get close enough to shout questions at him. Which isn't too close. In a letter to the IRS, Internal Revenue Service, Trump's lawyers admit that he violated the law by using money which had been contributed to the Trump Foundation. That's supposed to be a charity. He used that money for his own benefit, or some of the money for his own benefit. It appears that his lawyers advised him to come clean and try to settle before the IRS started investigating on its own. As you know, even here on this show, we have reported on things by the Trump Foundation, which looked kind of questionable. Yeah. Time magazine, yeah. Newsweek magazine, other news services have also reported on this. It was reported that foreign diplomats are being told they can curry favor with President-elect Trump right now, and President Trump, when he's sworn in, by staying and dining and drinking at his new hotel on Pennsylvania Avenue in Washington. Oh, he's getting them uh, free, f free drinks for the first happy hour, right? <laughs> I don't know. Yes. It also has been reported that when the president of Argentina called to congratulate Trump on winning, Trump's daughter listened in on the call, and Trump asked him to grease the skids and push through permits for a building Trump has been trying to construct in Argentina. Yeah, can you do something about that, right? It's also been reported that Trump asked a British politician to help him block construction of offshore power generating windmills, which would be visible from Trump's golf course in Scotland. Trump agreed to a $25 million settlement of lawsuits, charging he defrauded people who signed up for Trump University and also violated New York state law by operating an unapproved school. In appointments, it appears that Governor Nikki Haley of South Carolina will be the UN ambassador, and she has no diplomatic or foreign policy experience, so we are told. Well, in North Carolina, she has to have some diplomatic experience. I know some people. Or is it South Carolina? Which it's South state? Carolina. South Carolina. I mix up those two. Betsy right. DeVos, a Republican fundraiser and proponent of charter schools apparently will be the new Secretary of Education in the Trump administration. We know that Jeff Sessions will be the Attorney General, assuming he is confirmed by the Senate. Michael Flynn, the National Security Advisor. Mike Pompeo, the CIA Director, if he's a three-term congressman from Kansas, uh, was uh, pushed by the Tea Party in his run for Congress, uh, is a hardliner, is a proponent of torture, and is against closing Guantanamo Bay. Now, Dr. Ben Carson was talked about as being appointed Secretary of Housing. Uh, he in, had said just recently that he is unqualified for any government position, and he certainly has no experience in housing or government. Whether he actually will be proposed for HUD Secretary remains to be seen. Jill hmm. Stein, the Green Party candidate, has announced that she has raised the money and will be filing for recounts in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. Those are three key states which, despite what polling was showing, ended up going for Donald Trump and thereby ended up, if you do the count on the Electoral College, providing Trump with the Electoral College votes needed to win. But that will go to court if they find something. Almost certainly. If they good. find something, the Trump people would take it to court. So this may be a delay in swearing in a new president. Well, if the, they find something. The, the thing is that several polling and computer experts have suggested that something is radically wrong 
with the Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania results. Now, do keep in mind that even on this show, I and John and, and Jim agreed that the pollsters got it all wrong, okay? Mm -hmm. But as it turns out, as more votes come in, it looks like the pollsters got it exactly right in the national polling because Hillary Clinton is now leading Trump by more than two million votes in the popular vote. So, and it appears that the pollsters got it right in many of the states where the voting is now mm -hmm. final. Well, so the, the question being raised, is where the, the question being raised right. is, if the pollsters did get it right oh, nationally yeah. and did get it right in so many states, how is it that in these three key states they got it so wrong? And some suggest that, that they really got, got it right from a polling standpoint and that what happened was that the election was rigged somehow hmm. in those states. Some. Now, one of those computer scientists who has come forward and, and urged, initially urged the Clinton campaign in a phone call with John Podesta and hmm. others, Podesta being the manager of the Clinton campaign, uh, to file for a recount in those states, uh, happens to be a fellow named J. Alex Holderman, who is director of the University of Michigan's Center for Computer Security and Society. And there have been others. Now, that's a pretty prestigious person. Uh, they don't say that they're convinced that something actually did go wrong, that perhaps the Russians actually did figure out a way to hack in to the Secretary of State's office uh, or election offices in these various states. Uh, but they point out that it's possible. They point out that Hillary Clinton did much better where there were paper ballot machines used, mm -hmm. which then scanned paper ballots, than where the votes were done on all electronic machines, where there is no paper backup. Uh, they suggest that perhaps it would be easy to change the software in the electronic machines so that let's say you voted for Hillary Clinton, instead of recording a Hillary Clinton vote, it recorded a Donald Trump vote. Or there would be a way to hack into a system whereby when these electronic machines report their votes to a central computer, mm -hmm. you can get into that central computer and change the results. Uh, in any event, they have raised enough to force someone to take another look at this and that someone is Jill Stein, who was the Green Party candidate. Mm -hmm. She had no trouble raising the money necessary to pay for recounts in those three states. Right. And my understanding is it's about $2 million a state, so she came up with people contributing via a website, $6 million or thereabouts, if we don't know right. the exact number, but that's, that's a guess, uh, in a span of perhaps 36 hours. Pretty remarkable. Right. You of, course just said, real, you, of course, just realize with this commentary that you're not going to get a White House press credential. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that's the other thing. I mean, uh, that's the downside the, of reporting. The Trump, the Trump transition well, yeah. team yeah. Uh, invalidated all press credentials and required everyone to start applying all over again for press credentials. Well, that's yeah. why I will, I will apply for the press credentials. Yeah. and. Uh, Yes. I'll feed my information to Peter. <laughs> and, and also, just a just beard, to, a beard. Also, <laughs> just to show you, we haven't lost our sense of humor. In fact, neither has the New York Daily News. But in one of the great front pages of all time, from a visual standpoint, we have this. This was right after Trump put out his video uh, and seemed to be softening somewhat on sending Hillary to jail. Uh, on saying that there's no such thing as climate change, on saying that uh, uh, that the New York Times uh, isn't as horrible as he had been saying throughout the campaign. Uh, the Daily News came up with, with this graphic, a Photoshop of uh, Mr. Trump's hairdo, looking like Mr. Softy. Uh, bride of Frankenstein, actually. But um, be that as it may, you know, folks. It's if, if so, funny, if, but it's not funny. But you know, if, the, if, oh, the, if, if John, yeah. if someone had written this as as, as a novel, no, would you, never. You couldn't it. possibly believe never, any never of believe it. it. <laughs> never believe it. And, uh, but on top of that, I gotta say that the New York Times just 
fawned all over Mr. Trump, with the exception of Frank Bruni, in their editions the next day, number one, you know, feeling really good that they got an interview with him. And, you know, they got to be careful because he's playing them. That's what these guys do. They play you, they curry favor, they tell you things off the record, and you slowly get slipped into their pocket. You know, some, some folks will say, how come you guys are spending so much time on this? Why don't you leave this to the national media? Well, the national media... the canaries media, in the coal mine. You're, you're hearing stuff here you're not going to hear on yeah. the national no, media. No, you're not going to hear that. <laughs> anyway, yes. well, so, let's, let's, so locally, we, we had a major building change hands. Uh, the right. closing was November 10th, from what I hear. And this is the AT&T building at 440 Hamilton Avenue. Everyone knows it. I mean, yes. it's, a, it's sort of a landmark. Right. Well, it's in the skyline of the White Plains painting. And but and so they, they have a leasing agent, and apparently uh, they're, they're, space. they're apparently right. they're planning to turn it in, into office space. Just what we need in White Plains. It, it, mm. Yeah. Do we need yeah. more off yeah. <laughs> office space? I don't know. The, the, I don't know what the actual office market is, but it's been soft for quite some time, and I don't know that it's picked up, but that is a prime, prime location. Yeah, it's, it's a 12-story building and there's something like 300,000 square feet uh, that, that could be usable inside yeah. of it. Well, I know that when they, when they redid 360 Hamilton Avenue, um, they did a phenomenal job on that building. So with it, it, technology, and it's been very successful. So at and sold it to uh, something called American Equity Partners 1 LLC and Equity Partners 2 LLC. And, uh, you know, it, it's the kind of thing where, and I don't know whether, whether there is a mar market for such a thing, but, but if there were one very large company that wanted to move, say, out of New York City and, and into the suburbs, yeah, you know, like yeah, White Plains, uh, the build, it's within yeah. walking distance of the train station, certainly. Yeah, it's uh, prime. It, it would be a, you know, a, you know, a prime corporate, corporate monument. monument. Okay. We, we, the kickback from the new owners will be on the, in the mail. <laughs> okay. So, look, let's go to some important local news. Nick, here is the shocker of the week coming up, and that is that the, the, we have been notified by the mayor's office that there is going to be a meeting. Next slide, please. Coming on up. For, for the, uh, the downtown White Plains District in which they are going to present the new strategic plan for the downtown White Plains Transit di District and celebrate the hard work we've done to improve our city's future. Well, now that's they're, really they're doing, great. They're doing this in an office building yes. in downtown. Yes. Instead of the high school, which has, uh, is easy to get to, to and has lots of, Hamilton. lots of free parking. Uh, it is December 12th, uh, mm -hmm. and it will be great to have a huge turnout there to see just what it yeah, is they have in find mind. A place to park. This is supposed to be their final yeah. concept that, that yeah. they're going to uh, float. Uh, for redoing then the, the what train happens station next? Area. Are we going to have a public hearing? Are well, we going to have a site plan? Are we going to have some indications of who's going to do it? What the train station is actually going to look like? Are we going to have a hotel there? Are we well, going to I have mean, something that might make do, money? Do, do they do they put out requests yeah. for proposals? Yes. Do they uh, uh, you know take uh, potential developers to lunch? Just how does this move forward? Oh. Something that we. Have to learn. Are they going to are they going to have a schmear of housing on Battle Hill? Um, are they going to uh, uh, do a sports arena, which could really help the city? Uh, anyway, Center? this this, this final makers, this final uh, uh, proposal or plan or or, yeah. or uh, uh, thought on the part of the city is supposed to be based upon all of the input that they were Yes, and you told them up. you wanted Wi-Fi. That's yeah. really going to make a lot of money. <laughs> I mean, that's idiotic. Yeah. I mean, it's a toy. At the train station. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know what? no, you're going to be talking on your Wi-Fi, and you're going to walk off the platform. That's yeah. what you're going to do. Yeah. Right. One, Very one, dangerous One station. thing that I don't know we, that, whether we made clear about something else going on downtown is the fountain, you know, they're, they're going to redo the fountain, essentially rebuild it, yes. to yeah. try to make it work the way it's supposed to work. Uh, well, the, the total mm -hmm. to be spent on that project is mm -hmm. $475,000. Uh, and, and I say that because we had previously heard 400000 and then uh, 300000 because 300000 
was in the council agenda when they approved okay. it, but that three hundred thousand well, was just listen, to float. That was just to float. If you bonds. went to the council agenda or you watched the council meeting, and you heard the the presentation that was made by Beth Smeda, you would understand the economics of this, and it's not such a big deal. It really isn't. Uh, and it's spread over a number of years, and its benefit to the downtown area is tremendous. How so? How does it benefit? Uh, it makes um, Nadine Hunt Robinson mm -hmm. said she had asked uh, Dannon when they were changing to move to White Plains from Greenberg, and why they were doing that. They said that their employees wanted the vibrancy of downtown the movie theaters, the restaurants, and everything. And the fountain adds to that atmosphere. And there's an awful lot of development going on in White Plains now. So I think that the $475,000 is well spent money, and uh, if she, they, the, the details yeah, were right. gone into, and it was made very, very clear, right. in my opinion. Well, it's better than filling it in, you know? <laughs> right. And admitting they made a mistake, God knows. Now. Uh, the Gedney um, Association fired off its criticisms on the um, uh, uh, French American School of New York. Now, this was the reaction to the planning yeah, board right. approving the new site plan. And this is a picture of their letter, which went around town. And basically, it does this. Next slide. Uh, they build the area they feel is not that is not environmentally sensitive, sensitive greases the skids for a 4-3 approval. That's what the council, they say, wants to do, probably sometime in December. The vote for the declassification, they complain, will take place at a mystery date in December. No hearing. Two-phase construction, three years to construct the first portion, and then perhaps an up to seven-year delay for the rest of it. That's a 10 years to me, by my count. Smaller conservancy, left and right turns into and out of Hathaway Lane they don't like. No parking for renters of athletic fields. And they feel that the 415 cars, staff and drop-offs, and that there are no plans revealed for parcels B and C, which have been taken out of, of the mix. Now, White Plains housing. This is looking good. 240 single-family home sales for through the third quarter, highest pace since 2014. 68 homes sold July to October 1st. Average sales price, third quarter, about $704,000. Median price, $660,000. And Mike Wesley, who supplied these figures, ran really says that it is a the sales. The inventory he thinks is going up. Ruth Gruber died this week, the great journalist who helped turn attention on the way the U.S. and Britain were not settling refugees after World War II. A terrific person. She will be missed. That was a reporter. John Bailey, Jim Benaroff, Peter Katz, good night. This has been White Plains Week news and commentary about White Plains, Westchester, and the world. The views and opinions expressed on this program were solely those of the participants. White Plains Week, produced by White Plains Citizen Net Reporter and presented on Optimum Cable Channel 76 and Verizon Fios Channel 45. You may view White Plains Week anytime on the internet at whiteplainsweek.com, youtube.com, and wpcommunitymedia.org. For White Plains Week, this is Peter Katz speaking.